Today we are going to talk about integrated pest management in hydroponic systems. Hydroponic systems are typically set up in greenhouses and, as such, generally speaking, the fundamentals of integrated pest management for these systems tend to overlap considerably. This project benchmarked the IPM protocols for the Penn State greenhouses against protocols utilized by a handful of growers from the surrounding region. Two key companies that were benchmarked against were E3 Gardens and Aero Farms, both located in the western central PA area and specializing in hydroponic production of leafy greens. Penn State greenhouses and the greenhouses that they were being benchmarked against each have different goals and as such have different thresholds for intervention. Penn State's system is a research-based system that's set up to help students study and learn more about their given majors. Research systems value compartmentalization and isolate various varieties of plants under different conditions. Thresholds in these systems are designed to protect research integrity and the safety of all people working with plant materials. Commercial systems, on the other hand, value efficiency and the production of marketable produce. These systems emphasize consistency and production and often incorporate cost-benefit analyses to determine the thresholds they wish to set for action. Common insect pests in hydroponic systems include aphids, thrips, mealybugs, spider mites, white flies, and fungus gnats. Common microbial pathogens include bacterial spot, powdery mildew, molds, wilts, and viruses like the tobacco mosaic virus and the tomato spotted wilt virus. One of the most ubiquitous and troublesome pests in hydroponic systems are aphids. While these pests often pose little or no direct threat to the plant, they are common vectors for more troublesome viral pathogens. Most common controls for this pest include exclusion, insecticidal soaps, and neem oil. The Penn State greenhouses, however, rely principally on biological control provided by the release of parasitoid wasps to control populations of aphids in their spaces. Thrips are another common issue in hydroponic systems. These insects can be controlled through the utilization of strict sanitation protocols, vertical shelving practices, and efficient filtration systems. The Penn State greenhouses augment these measures by selecting parthenocarpic crops whenever possible and releasing predatory mites which seek out and feed on the thrips. Two other common pests include mealybugs and spider mites. These do pose a threat to the greenhouse but are generally of less concern when compared to other more virulent pests. They are also somewhat less common. Penn State principally uses the biocontrols Cryptolamus and Prosimulus to control mealybugs and spider mites, respectively. Wilts can be most easily recognized when plants begin to lose turgor while also retaining moisture within their soil. These are common problems throughout most greenhouses and particularly in hydroponic systems. The most common wilts affecting hydroponic crops are Fusarium oxysporum, Verticillium wilt, Rhizoctonia root rot, and Erwinia bacterial wilt in cucumber and tomato. These pathogens are particularly devastating and can wipe out entire crop systems in little time at all. Prevention through sanitation and exclusion is typically the most effective method of keeping these threats at bay. Mildews are the most prevalent fungal pathogen of concern in the Penn State greenhouses. Although the early stages cause mostly cosmetic damage, later stages can lead to complete infestation of the system and plant death. For mildews, the best strategies will always be preventative rather than mitigating an already existing infestation. To deal with these troublesome pathogens at the PSU greenhouses, Scott typically uses trichoderma as a biocontrol. Viruses are uncommon in the Penn State greenhouse. When they do arise, however, they are usually vectored in by insect pests, such as thrips. They are difficult to manage, but one of the most effective management strategies is to minimize the prevalence of insect pests and to emphasize sanitary cultural practices. The most common viruses in hydroponic systems are tobacco mosaic virus, tomato spotted wilt virus, and impatiens necrotic spot virus. IPM in the Penn State greenhouses utilizes the IPM pyramid. 
The base of this pyramid emphasizes the importance of cultural controls, which includes the selection of resistant varieties, good plant culture methods, and general sanitary practices. The second tier of the pyramid is mechanical control. This essentially amounts to exclusion and disruption of paths into growing spaces for pests. The third tier is biological control. This is the most important tier for integrated pest management in the Penn State greenhouses due to limitations on other controls created by the unique needs of the system. The final tier of the IPM pyramid, chemical controls, is rarely utilized in the Penn State greenhouses due to concern for student and faculty safety. In general, the PSU greenhouses are limited in their options for control. Cultural controls are somewhat emphasized, but sanitation is greatly challenged by rates of foot traffic and physical contact between students and plants. Similarly, mechanical control is limited by the high levels of traffic moving in and out of the spaces. It is for these reasons that biocontrols are so heavily emphasized in the PSU systems. Tactic application in the Penn State greenhouses includes the use of insecticidal soaps, neem oils, and parasitic wasps. Insecticidal soaps and neem oils are used on a smaller level, while the parasitic wasps are more common and are deployed through sticky cards throughout most of the greenhouse spaces. To keep plants healthy and well, it is particularly important to carefully check for signs, symptoms, and vectors on a regular basis. Scott stated that he personally scouts the greenhouses approximately two to three times a week for pests. In addition to Scott, Aaron, a student here, scouts multiple times per week to assist him as well. The only tools that they normally use are their own two eyes, and monitoring is done on a visual basis. Not only do they scout for pests, but also for diseases such as powdery mildew and other symptoms such as wilting leaves and or stems. Additionally, environmental conditions are monitored such as temperature, humidity, and airflow. Overall, the needs of the Penn State greenhouses are quite unique when compared to commercial operations like Aero Farms and E3 Gardens. This is primarily owing to their dedicated function as teaching tools rather than production facilities, which incentivizes a heavy, systematic emphasis on biocontrols. When benchmarking the Penn State greenhouses against operations like E3 and Aero Farms, one key point of divergence that was noted was the regimented scheduling being applied to the monitoring programs in the commercial companies. There really is no established regimen for monitoring the hydroponic systems or, for that matter, any of the other greenhouse spaces in the Penn State greenhouses. Presently, Scott is solely responsible for monitoring and it is conducted in a generally improvised manner. While this approach has been working out well enough, the fact is that undesirable control measures are occasionally necessary. This, in and of itself, suggests that more needs to be done. First. Monitoring and scouting practices should be clearly scheduled and zoned. Students should also be enlisted to assist in monitoring efforts. In addition to improving pest control in these spaces, this would also create an interactive learning opportunity in applied IPM for students in a wide variety of classes, but most specifically, this one. Finally, while chemical controls are rarely used in these systems, management has lamented the occasional need for them, even going so far as to admit losing sleep over the issue. Our team's final goal for optimizing integrated pest management in the Penn State greenhouses is to take the already low levels of chemical controls being utilized and reduce them to zero by fortifying existing practices relating to cultural and mechanical control and implementing an organized system for monitoring and record keeping throughout all greenhouse spaces.